Hello and welcome back to Tech Day's 10 Minute IT Jams. I'm Tech Day's Managing Editor and today on the show we have Presensol Australia Managing Director Jan Cook. So who is Presensol? It's a company that specialises in intelligent automation, business process management, low code and innovation. The company has a range of awards under its belt. Last year it uh, received the Appian 2020 Value Award for Outstanding Achievement in Delivery, Excellence and Time to Value in Asia Pacific and Europe. In 2019, the company was also named Automation Anywhere's most capable partner. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Dan, who will talk a little bit more about intelligent automation and why you should care. Welcome, Dan. Hi, it's great to be here. Uh, so in terms of um, uh, intelligent automation, intelligent automation is really a combination of different technologies. Um, at the core of it, we really have our low code application development platforms, such as Appian, um, which gives us the ability to build enterprise grade applications up to 20 times quicker than using lower level programming languages like Java or C Sharp. Uh, we then complement this technology with, with robotic process automation or RPA as it's quite commonly known. Um, which is the deployment of software bots that really act like humans um, and, and they drive applications through their native front end as an end user would. Um, it's really good for repetitive tasks and, and also integrating to legacy software that doesn't necessarily have a, a programmable interface. Then we use other technologies such as machine learning, um, where we, we train machines to, for example, recognize documents, um, we, we recognize images, and from those documents, we can pull out um, information so for example, on an invoice, we might be able to pull out amounts, we might be able to pull out supply reference numbers, et cetera, and, and really push that through into our intelligent automation systems. Um, all of this is great in terms of getting data in to your intelligent automation system, um, but you obviously then need reporting and analytics to be able to get that data back out in a meaningful way. And what we find with intelligent automation is that um, we can often give businesses new insights into how they're performing, how their processes are running, and how the intelligent automation ecosystem is running. Tying all this together is uh, really critical to have process orchestration. Um, so this is often included in, in low-code tools such as Appian, um, and it's vital to coordinate not only the users and the business and their business processes, but also the different aspects of intelligent automation and the different technologies that we are, are utilizing um, and, and really coordinating that end-to-end -end process across the users, the technologies, which results in a much better outcome for the businesses. Importantly, intelligent automation is there to complement human activity. By freeing them of the mundane, repeatable tasks, they can focus on solving human problems. Brilliant. All right, so you've talked a little bit about what intelligent water automation is. So can you share some further examples about how you're putting this into practice? Yeah, so look, we've implemented intelligent automation across a wide variety of, of industry verticals. We, we recently completed a project for Queensland Government for the Financial Assurance Scheme, um, which handles $8.6 billion of, of surety for mine sites in Queensland. So this is where uh, mining companies have to put down a certain amount of money um, so that if the mine site is abandoned, the state can rehabilitate that mine site back to its former self from an environmental perspective. They're changing the way they work and going to more of a contribution scheme, um, which helps to sort of decentralize the risk away from individual mine sites and into different mine sites around the state. And over time, this will allow the state to start rehabilitating very old mine sites that they've got. So it's going to be a really good result for, for, for the state of Queensland. We used uh, Appian and other technologies to link up three government departments to all um, work in concert around one central business process for the financial um, assurance scheme. And then we integrate that up into the Queensland Government Treasury financial system. Um, for another one of our clients on Super, um, they use intelligent automation systems to um, take in data from multiple digital channels, um, to orchestrate that data with multiple backend systems and databases, and really then present back a 360 degree unified view of the customer back to their call center and, and back to their internal teams um, and, and allow users to interact with that. We do some great work for a, a lifetime care agency. Um, this is, you know, this is around complex case management 
Um, and it's really, we've come in and we've already saved them in a very short amount of time, more than $800,000 a year in repeat savings by removing a lot of their admin type processes. And the, the benefit we really like about this is the fact that it, it allows their, their, their um, employees to really focus on caring for participants in their scheme and that's what their job is you know that's 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 their their their, their primary objective to facilitate the care of people in the schemes not to do admin work um, we've worked with quite a few financial services um, both both uh, in Australia and in uh, Europe so processes around anti-money laundering know your customer customer onboarding offboarding etc you know there's a lot of good scope there for using machine learning and and, and orchestration to orchestration tools to automatically identify documents and identity documents and make sure they're not fraudulent by cross-checking them with other data sources. Uh, playing again on, on, on the financial assurance and environment side, we've done a lot of work with the Department of Environment and Sciences um, around sort of permit and licensing systems, waste certificates, the parks and wildlife systems. And in there, we've really integrated to and wrapped legacy financial systems with modern technology. We've integrated out to their core dynamic systems, so utilizing systems they've already got in place. Um, and we've included things like payment gateways. And, and the benefit of that is it really gives the end user, the customer, you and me, the ability to really go end to end and reduce what used to be a, a sort of 10 day process down to a process that takes less than a couple of minutes. Uh, um, uh, slightly out there one, we, we've also been, um, uh, used intelligent automation um, in, in the egg farming sector. So we actually go and uh, read data directly off production um, egg grading machines on the factory floor. We take that up into the cloud, we then use a variety of different technologies to manipulate that data, bring it back onto dashboards to give the management a much better view of what's going on in real time and allow them to do better production forecasting. So quite a wide variety of, of, of different use cases for intelligent automation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you were going to summarize these case studies um, for organizations, how does it benefit them? So, I mean, look, most organizations are really looking to cut their costs and improve efficiency and at the same time improve their customer experience. Intelligent automation really helps with both. Um, you know, for us, using intelligent automation to improve efficiency is really about in engaging the right users at the right time with the right data to enable them to make better decisions in a more timely manner. That's, that, that's one of the best ways we can get efficiency. You know, by doing this, it really reduces the cost of rework and it also increases the efficiency um, by uh, reducing the amount of admin work that people have to do by automating a lot of the admin work. Uh, reducing the amount of mundane tasks also helps to improve staff morale um, by, by giving them better job satisfaction because they're now spending more time on the creative work, on the human-centric side of work that they do. In terms of customer experience, generally by making things faster and more accurate and more accessible, you end up with happier customers uh, that can have lower cost interactions with your organization and that generally leads to better customer retention and repeat business. We also find that it's sort of organizations that uh, have, have used intelligent automation have been a lot more uh, prepared for business changes, challenges, opportunities and threats. You know, a point in case obviously being COVID, um, where a number of organizations that we've implemented intelligent automation for have been able to adapt very quickly and have seen very little business interruption um, to, to the way they work and, and their systems. I think part of the art of what we do is knowing what you should and what you shouldn't automate. You know, which elements of intelligent automation to use within the specific organization and when to use them. Yeah, every technology has its sweet spots and its limitations, and you need some expert advice to know what they are and how to get the best out of those technologies for your particular organization. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to throw a tips question your way. So what are your top three tips for a successful project? Um, I think that the, the first one's a really simple one. And it's a really cost effective one. And, and that's start on the whiteboard and refine your processes before you implement. You know, a poor process made efficient is still a poor process. You're often leaving really easy cost savings on the table 
that you could have been made and not only that but you end up can spend more on implementing steps in the process that may have been redundant years ago but nobody's ever reviewed as part of that you're also engaging your user base early that's really important as well you know it's vital to take users on the journey from day one all the way through to the completion of the project and then for ongoing improvements if your users feel like they own the system then the acceptance of change, especially continual change, um, will, will come a lot more readily. Second tip I'd have is, is preparing the organization for the speed of change and delivery. Again, it's more of a human-centered issue. You know, intelligent automation initiatives, they can offer deliver results faster than the business can keep up. Um, you know, if not properly managed, then it can lead to change fatigue. Um, and from, from, from that point of view, you know, the, the change management side and taking users on the journey is, is, is really important. Third tip I'd have is don't pick a really complex process with a large degree of variability as the first thing that you automate. Equally, don't pick a low value process with little business impact. You need to identify a process that delivers an impact to the business that's visible, um, but starts to build momentum in the business, gets people used to the way of working and used to the new, new technology. And then when you've got that established base and acceptance within the organization, that's where you can start to accelerate and start to tackle more complex business processes. Brilliant. There are some fantastic, fantastic tips there. I hope there's something that every organization can take away from that. So that concludes our Tech Day 10 Minute IT Jam with Proceed Souls Dan Cook. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Dan. Thanks for having me.